good afternoon everybody and welcome today welcome to today's interactive learning session so today we have a very interactive uh, very interesting interactive learning session about fixed deposits and government of india securities and traditionally we as individuals have always been investing in fixed deposits uh, considering it one of the safest investments which is available so today we have the india bonds team who is going to explain us the benefits of investing in government of india securities and they are also going to explain us what are the different types of government of india securities which are available in which we can invest as individuals the importance of the government of india securities to the indian economy and how the what is the size of the government of india securities market in india plus they are also going to explain us the comparison uh, between the government of india securities and the fixed income uh, fixed deposits which are available and how are retail investors can invest in government of india securities so without any further delay i am going to hand over the platform to the india bonds team and uh, from the india bonds team we have uh, mr ashish agarwal who is executive director at ak capital who is having 25 plus years of experience in the fixed income market and with him uh, we have mr sunny merchandani who is from the india bonds team and he is having 15 plus years of experience in investment advisory so i hand over the session to you sunny so you can take it forward thanks uh, paritosh for the introduction uh, very good afternoon to all the participants it is always a pleasure joining you here and uh, with nse and india bonds on the interesting interesting topic of uh, government of india bonds versus fixed deposits sunny over to you yes thank you so much paritosh and thank you nse for allowing us to uh, perform or uh, help us educate the public at large uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen a warm welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar we hope you all are doing well My name is Sunny Mirchandani. I come with over 15 years of experience of investment banking and fixed income. Uh, I represent India Bonds. What is India Bonds? India Bonds is a fixed income focused fintech platform empowering investors to make informed decisions by giving access to information and knowledge. I would like to welcome Mr. Ashish Agarwal who comes with over 25 years of experience in fixed income market. He is an executive director with AK Capital Finance and Services. Uh, one of the prominent bond houses of india and recently acclaimed investment bank of the year by sostam without taking much time today's topic we'll be covering would be fd versus government securities uh, in this we will try to touch upon uh, what one can expect in terms of returns from government securities uh, what is the difference or what are the advantages of government securities over fixed deposits what are the basic features of ncds or bonds uh what is the gsec altogether and the importance of gsec in our economy these are some of the topics that we'll be covering uh i'll start sharing my presentation so that without any further delay we'll start with the same okay uh let's start with the basics of bonds uh basically what are bonds bonds or ncds these are fixed term instruments that is used by corporates or government of india to raise capital in the form of debt it functions very similar like a loan let's assume that today you have 10000 rupees you go to a bank you give a fixed deposit with them and that acts as a loan that you have te technically given to a bank on which the bank pays you interest in a similar way uh in a borrower or an issuer which is either a government of india or uh, a corporate they can raise these bonds and the investor which is you me or any individual or any corporate or any institute who can invest in these bonds or ncds they get a fixed rate of interest or a floating rate of interest against this and this is for a predetermined rate uh for example you can invest in a bond which can be a two year Three year, five year, seven year, or ten year, or any other tenure bonds that come across. At the end of this tenure, you get your principal back. Very similar to an FD. Uh, the uh, some of the characteristics that is there in a bond is uh, who borrows is called the issuer or a borrower. Uh, what is the minimum investment that you can make in these bonds? That is denoted by the word face value. That is, a bond can be a face value of ten thousand rupees. uh ashish ji will cover the topic wherein what is the minimum investment size in gsec 
in going going forward how it can be compared to an fd uh, the interest rate and payment frequencies just similar to an fd even in bonds there is an interest rate that is committed at the beginning of the bond and that is paid in various intervals that is either in on quarterly basis monthly basis or annual basis or sometimes even on maturity uh, then what is the other characteristic all the bonds that are issued by corporate or a state corporation these are all rated bonds uh, currently rating ranges from aaa going up to aaab minus uh, these are sebi registered ra rating agencies that give the, give these ratings so these are third party rating agencies nobody can just go and give ahead and rating sebi registered uh, rating agencies can only give these ratings to these bonds maturity i have already covered this is maturity or redemption date is similar to your maturity date of an fd who can invest in these bonds any individual any huf any corporate any uh, institute they can invest or a trust can also invest there are various other investor classes that can also invest in a bond in every bond that will always be defined uh, how does a what is the basics of a bond how does it work very similar i'll just try and you can point at my arrow where i am pointing out you have made an investment you are you go to a issuer an issuer comes to you says my name is company abc limited the rate of interest that i'm going to pay you is 10% interest payment frequency will be 10% at the end of the year that is every year they'll be paying 10% interest to you uh tenure of this bond will be 5 years uh face value that is the minimum investment value would be 10000 sometimes this can be 1 lakh sometimes this can be 10 lakhs and which will be the allotment date the day on which you will be uh getting these bonds credited in your dmat account this is these are the five acronyms that is there now you have made an investment on 31st january 2022 you have made an investment of 10000 rupees you will get an interest at 10 at 10% that is a 1000 rupees at the end of 31st jan 2023 every year you will get this 1000 rupees till the fifth year along on the end at the end of fifth year along with the interest you will also get your principal back very very similar to how an fd works the same thing has been denoted in a tabular format also and in a graphical format just for easier representation uh now let's come to today's topic which is government securities what are government securities government securities are nothing but tradable debt instruments that acknowledge that government of india's debt obligation that means these uh, securities or these bonds they are issued on behalf of government of india which is managed by reserve bank of india who issues them it is issued by central government and state government so central government whenever they issue a debt it is called gsec whenever state government issues these are called sdls that is state development loans if it is a shorter term tenure which is less than 1 year issued by the government the central government then it is called tbils if it is more than 1 year then these are called gsec or sdls that is always a maturity of 1 year or more so to give you some graphical representation debt capital markets or the bond market government securities they are bifurcated in gsec and sdl if you can see my arrow reserve bank of india is the one who manages both government of india issues central government which is the central government issues gsec and sdls are issued by examples of government of maharashtra government of gujarat uh, government of tamil nadu government of punjab and various other state governments they can issue sdls and anybody like you and me can invest in these from here i would like to hand over the mic to ashish ji who can help us understand the importance of government securities and various other topics uh, just to make this uh, webinar a little more interesting what we would be doing is we would be uh, hosting some polls which will help everybody understand and also participate in this webinar to make it a little interactive uh, i hand over the mic to ashish ji if you can take it forward please thanks thanks ani so uh, having understood what gsec is uh, it is important for us to understand how gsec come into play uh what is the very purpose of gsec being in existence so as we all know government manages its own balance sheet where it has various revenue receipts in form of taxes it has various capital receipts in form of say this investments of uh, public sector undertakings so all these re receipts put together are then matched to their outflows which are expenditures so in developing economies mostly the expenditures of the government are more than far higher than what the inflow of the government is so there arises a fiscal deficit 
so this fiscal deficit is nothing but the balancing figure for outflows of the government and the inflows so if outflows are more there there is a state of fiscal deficit now how is fiscal fiscal deficit met it could be met either by issue of government securities or by printing of notes so because if more and more notes are printed and circulated in the economy it leads to uh, inflation issue and therefore mostly in all developed economies the central banks manage the currency chest for government of india and government of india basically issues gsec so gsec we have understood is a loan that you and me if we invest we have extended to government of india and uh, it is managed by reserve bank of india so the first and foremost importance is to manage the fiscal deficit of the country then it is important to note that these gsecs are kind of mandatory investment for all commercial banks commercial banks have to maintain various liquidity ratios like slr ratio crr ratio so 18% of the deposit base of the bank is mandated to be invest in gsec so this forms a basic element for uh, element for investment by various banks it attracts foreign capital like we say fpi is flowing into uh, stock market and therefore stock market is scaling new highs so likewise in our debt market also fpis do come in, in uh, and uh, invest in gsec and that's how the indices in terms of gsec yields also move uh, up and down gsec importantly is a risk free zero risk weight carrying asset because it is a sovereign debt it is also a backbone for uh, all the fixed income instruments if we talk of corporate bonds say issued by tata birlas and all these corporate houses what you can expect as return coming from them could be a certain spread from gsec because gsec is a sovereign security in nature then we can always have real time information reflected in the gsec market for example if there is a event there is a policy rate hike you will see immediately getting reflected the uh, the uh, scale may differ but the action gets reflected in the gsec yields so it reflects the real time information in the markets and these gsecs can well be used as collateral for securing loan financing uh, can we move to next sunny so uh, ashish before we move to the next slide just have one query so you are saying that every bank has to make this investment in sla in government securities yeah is so sorry yeah so uh, there is a concept of net time and demand liabilities which are essentially fixed deposits so as we all know banks are funded by deposits bank deposits which you and me keep parked with the various bank uh, bankers out of these deposits they are mandatorily required to invest 18% of their deposit corpus into government of india securities because these securities are largely liquid and in the event there is some call or pressure on deposit base of a bank they can be readily liquidated to meet the liabilities so we are saying banks actually rely on investing in government securities to keep their liquidity intact that's true that's true okay and these are tradable instruments these are tradable instruments they can be liquidated any day any point of time and is there a lock in that is attached to this basically there is a maturity attached to every gsec so uh, the gsec when it is issued there is a ma particular maturity date attached so there is no uh, uh, lock in period you have to hold the security till the maturity period but exit options are available by way of selling the gsec in the secondary market so since it is such a liquid instrument you can liquidate it any point of time so these can be there is no lock in for a retail investor they can invest in them and they can sell they it can to whoever they, they wish to yes they there is no lock in yes. understood so we'll just uh, run our first poll uh, request all the participants to before we move to the next slide to please do participate in this uh, we can try and address this query in case if it doesn't get answered you can see the poll right now on your screen we'll just give uh, 30 seconds ashish ji to the audience for them to participate in the poll and then we'll try and uh, go to the next slide sure i hope everybody is able to see the poll on their screens we'll wait for another 15 seconds and then we'll move on to the next slide
पोल आने आए अब देखो ना I think there's some difficulty. I don't know if a lot of people can see the poll. Uh... Yes, yeah, Sunny. So the, the poll is not visible. Maybe you can uh, uh, announce the poll. Okay. I think we've already got some participants who have participated. Almost seventy uh, people have participated till now. Uh, we'll just wait for another fifteen twenty seconds. A lot of people are already participating in the poll. Can you see? Okay. Uh, so the question that we had or we had raised is: Are GSEX tradable in the market? Uh, around seventy-three people have participated. Ninety-two uh, percent of uh, the audience has participated and given an answer. The answer was yes, no, or maybe. Uh, answer is yes. Ninety-two uh, percent have already uh, given an answer of yes. Around seven and a half percent have said no or maybe. Ashish ji, if you can just give us a quick uh, lowdown on the same. Yeah, sure. So when we say GSEC is liquid, what does it mean? Let's say if we are invested in some real estate asset and we are in requirement of funds, so real estate will take some time for the turnaround of the transaction. So it can't be liquidated overnight. As against that, there is an asset class called GSEC. Which for which there is ready market available at any point of time, you can buy, you can sell, you can have ready quotes for buy and sell. Therefore, it becomes a liquid instrument. Uh, if we look at another asset class, which is shares, they are traded on the screen and they are liquid. Likewise, gold also is liquid. Fairly, uh, uh, you know, uh, established prices are there, and therefore gold can get liquidated. Similarly, GSEX are. the one of the most liquid asset class where one can invest okay thank you ashish ji we'll move on to the next slide yeah so if we were to look at what is the size of the bond market as we have understood now there are various classes of securities one of course is government security you can see 76 odd lakh crore worth of government securities were outstanding as on 31st march 2022 then there are treasury bills of 7 odd lakh crores and there are corporate bonds which are issued by private sector houses private sector companies so if we look at the pie chart you would see 44% of the overall composition of bond market is denominated or is constituted by uh, government securities so if we add another uh, quasi government securities in form of state development loans all of this totals to about 70 Seven odd percent uh, in terms of overall size of the bond market. The corporate bond, which is private sector bonds outstanding, constitute about twenty three percent of the overall volume. The size of the bond market we can estimate is as large as one crore seventy three lakh crores. That's huge. And if we look at GSEC trading, uh, the chart on the right. basically uh, we say the gsec is liquid so this liquidity is going to get reflected in this chart where you can see gsec worth 66 lakh odd crores has got has got traded and dealt during the financial year 31st march 2022 treasury bills also for 14 odd lakhs so roughly about 15 lakh crores has got traded in the financial year and sdls of about 6.78 lakh crores uh can we move uh, to the next sunny yeah so as we discussed gsex have various maturities attached so at the time of auction or whenever you buy a gsex you will always look forward to what is the outstanding maturity for how long you will have to remain invested in gsex unless you exit by selling them a, a, a in the interim period so gsex uh, is plotted by what yield it gains over the period so one year gsec there will be a curve as to what was the traded yield on one year gsec on one particular day so this chart covers the yield movement from march 2022 till date 
and you would see 10 year gsec at about 7.76% annualized as we speak and uh, one year gsec is at 6.32% currently so why this is spread because people assume a higher risk if they are investing for higher tenor and therefore the expected expected yield uh, expectations are higher so this is how one year three year five year 10 year gsec are priced in the market uh, can we move to the next ani yeah so this is a interesting slide on what is the size of government security market to the left if we look at the chart basically it represents the proportion of government debt in the gross domestic product of the economy so when we say that us are developed economies they have uh, matured government securities market we can see that 128% of their gdp is represented by government outstanding debt while in india we have 74% fairly mature but Uh, uh, as compared to us we are at 74 odd percent but then there are countries like mexico and indonesia where the percentage is as low as 39% on the right sa- side we can see what is the yield that one can expect or one can get in gsec in various countries so as we all know japan has the m- minimum yield uh, cycle curve and therefore 10 year uh, gsec if one was to invest in japan it will yield something like 0.25% and in india it yields at about 7.59% for countries like south africa and brazil it runs into double digits got it so ashish will run the next poll uh, for uh, everybody to participate sure. the query sure. is live on your screen uh, the question is who all can invest in gsec and sdl the answers are individual huf corporate institutions or all of the above so i'll just repeat who all can invest in gsec and sdl government securities and state development loans individual huf corporate institutions all of the above request all to please participate as many people can participate it will be helpful if somebody is not got the answer we are happy to address it happy to explain request all to please participate so we already have around 60 60 plus people who participated we can we are waiting for some more we wait for another 10 15 seconds i'll just repeat who all can invest in gsec and sdl individual huf corporate institutions financial institutions all of the above okay uh we'll stop the poll now so ashish if you can help us out with the answer yeah so uh, who can invest in gsec is essentially any investor who is eligible to invest in shares or for that matter any security basically investor needs to have dmat account in place one who has done kyc with the depository and he holds a dmat account is eligible to buy government security so all the classes of investors should be the right person uh, answer okay uh, we'll go with the next poll since we've already covered this point uh, what is the tentative interest rate or a return an investor can expect by investing in a government security or a gsec what is the tentative interest rate income or return an investor can expect on investing in government securities i hope everybody can see the next poll uh, on your screen i see few people have already participated requested everybody to please participate it will really help you clear out a lot of your doubts what is the kind of return that you expect that you can get in government securities so we'll wait for another 15 seconds i already have a lot of people continuously participating requesting all to please participate who are there on the screen so the uh, options that are there is 6.5% to 6.75% 7 to 7.6% or all of the above so the reason why this range is given because the returns keep on fluctuating because these are tradable instruments 
okay uh, we'll we'll stop this question this poll okay uh, so the so uh, ashish ji a lot of people have participated and given an answer of 6.5% to 6.75% around 15% 10% people and around 40% of the people have given an answer of 7 to 7.6% so that means almost 50% people have given this answer and 50% plus have given an answer of uh, all of the above if you can uh, quickly just let I, us know i would put it this way all of them are right actually because it depends what tenor you are buying gsec for so this is the yield curve if you are buying a one year gsec you can expect about 6.3 year uh, percent return if you are buying 10 uh, year security you can expect 7.75% so it depends on the tenor of government securities that you are getting into good so anybody can invest in a one year three year five year or a 10 year gsec depending if you can see on the yield curve this is the current ongoing rate as of 15th uh, july uh, june that is 6.32 for a one year 7.21 for three year 7.54 for five years and 10 years 7.76 this is on annualized basis uh gsec is idly paid on semi-annual basis like you had uh, covered earlier right ashish yeah so one thing important to note is that all the gsec will have half yearly interest payouts if we are investors we can expect gsec to be yielding half yearly payout to us and uh, of course the principal comes at maturity okay got it so we'll move on to the next slide Yeah, so this is an important slide for our discussion today as to how bank deposits are uh, different from GSEC and what edge GSEC or SDL may have over bank deposits. So if we look at returns first, because the end of the day return is what matters. So bank, private sector banks offer something in the range of five to six odd percent on their deposits, depending upon the tenor. PSU banks offer a little lower and therefore five and five and a half percent range. While in a GSEC, as we have noticed in the yield curve uh, in the previous slide, the GSEC yields 7.64 percent for 10 years, while state development loans yield even higher at something like 8.10 percent for 10 years. So you can see clearly see an arbitrage or a delta of roughly two, two and a half percent with GSEC and SDLs will yield you over bank deposits. So this is why uh, in a risk return matrix, you are getting a safer asset class because this is a sovereign asset. You are lending nothing to but uh, other than government of India. And therefore you are having a risk free asset, which is issued by government of India as against bank deposit, which is unsecured and is insured only up to five lakh rupees by DICGC. The face value or the minimum ticket size for a bank deposit could be rupees 1000, while in GSEC and SDL, it is 10,000 rupees. On liquidity, like we discussed uh, in the previous slides, the bank deposit is non-transferable in nature. So if I hold a bank deposit, I can't liquidate by selling it to someone else. All I need to do is that I can approach my bank that I want a premature withdrawal. So in that case, they apply penal charges for me to uh, apply me to be uh, getting money uh, uh, before the maturity. While in GSEC and SDL, these are securities which can be traded and uh, on a stock exchange, and therefore they are easily sellable in the stock markets. Not only sellable, if you want to buy, you you can purchase through a secondary market route, and you can expect a capital gain in case there is a price improvement, so which is not the case in case of uh, bank deposits. In terms of lock-in, uh, fixed deposits have a particular maturity date, while GSEC is not attached to any particular lock-in. You can liquidate them any at any point of time. In terms of uh, how the asset exists, basically the fixed deposit gets reflected in your bank account while GSEC and SDLs get reflected in your DMAT account. And these are exchange tradable instruments. All the three, which is bank deposit, GSEC and SDLs, they can be used as a potential source of collateral for obtaining loans from banks and institutions. So I think this is how we can 
kind of position various assets in terms of whether to invest in bank deposits in terms of safety or uh, the gsec is a comparable instrument in terms of uh, better instrument in terms of safety or returns we can see that both in terms of safety as well as in returns gsec in current market situation outperforms the bank deposits so uh, ashish ji in very simple words uh, gsec would be very similar to bank fds however it would have certain benefits over a bank fd yes there is convenience of bank fd that you can just walk down to your branch which is just next to you and you can open up an fd but that is coming at a cost of a lower return that is one uh, second it is both of them are unsecured in nature however banks have a 5 lakh rupee capping in terms of bank in terms of fd guarantee that is there from the government by way of insurance however eventually banks are also investing in government securities eventually almost 18% of their capital and investment minimum investment size can be as low as 10000 is that is that fair to say yeah that's fair and uh, today if i delete if i if i redeem an fd premature withdrawal karta hu to mujhe negative usme negative uh, return milta hai aur bhi mera returns kam ho jata hai samjho 5% maine agar invest kiya hai at 5% aur agar maine premature withdrawal kiya so then mujhe 5 ki jagah 4 ya 4 and a half mil sakta depending on bank to bank करेक्ट वहीं यहाँ पे and long term in nature year is more than 1 year one, one year more than 1 year not not 3 years like in real estate correct okay great and uh, there is no lock in so the reason why i am reiterating these questions is because in the registration link we have received a lot of queries which are around these questions so we are trying to address because we will have limited time to take up q and a uh, however uh, the reason why we will spend more time on the slide is just to cover those points. and these are all in dmat form ashish ji yes so gsec can be held in dmat form because it is tradable it has to be in form which is uh, readily liquid and do we need to open a separate dmat account just for a gsec no a common dmat account for shares or corporate bonds with works for gsec as well so same okay. dmat anybody who has a dmat account with any stock broker they can use the same dmat account without going through a hassle of opening a separate dmat account for this correct correct they can use and this, this is applicable on gsec sdl and normal corporate bonds as well yeah all the bonds uh, when we discussed about the corporate bond market basically the uh, private sector institutions which are issuing bonds or for that matter government of india or sdl all of them can be held in the dmat account which is uh, mostly there for Uh, all the uh, all of us uh, maybe for shares or for different reasons but the dmat account remains the same and uh, your in your presentation slide you are saying loan as a collateral uh, basically whenever i have taken an fd from a bank if i want to go and take a loan against it it's very easily available from the same bank what whom can i go in case of gsec whom can i take this loan from Anything if i have invested in gsec you can go to any institution any uh, bank basically you can pledge your holdings in the uh, government security or stl and avail okay. loan against that collateral even corporates like uh, india bonds uh, also provides the same facility or ak capital also or nbfcs also provide this facility if i am not wrong correct yes that's true it is not restricted only to banks you can actually go to any financial institute and they can because these are highly liquid securities that's true that's true okay because eventually these are very easily tradable in the market and if anybody gives a loan if they want to liquidate it's very easy for the investor also and will the interest rate difference also be uh, quite low like how you can take a loan against fd well uh, there will be some haircut in the sense if 100 rupee collateral is provided there will be about 10% haircut and 90 rupees is the amount of loan probably you can uh, avail from the institutions so okay. uh, which is the case in case of fixed deposits also understood and it the interest rate difference between an fd loan versus a gsec loan also will be almost similar yeah so we discuss what is the return one can expect on uh, fixed deposits 5 to 6 odd percent is one 
the private sector one uh, banks which are paying while if you invest in sdls you can expect uh, upward of 8% okay thank you so much ashish ji i'll just take to the next slide i'll uh, quickly explain to our retail audience uh, how they could look at investing how an individual can look at investing in government securities uh, you can do this through an exchange you can do this to an online platform like india bonds wherein you can go on india bonds uh, on any any platform you can uh, do your kyc which is your physical kyc or your e kyc uh, if you do it on a online platform it can be done uh, paperlessly within 3 minutes uh, you can look at buying your gsec or sdl from uh, either through your broker or through an exchange which uh, exchange brokers or through a platform wherein gsec and sdl is uh, tradable and you can select them you can purchase it you have to make a payment uh, to the uh, to the account and the gsec will be credited back into your existing dmat you don't have to open a separate dmat account is what ashish is just right now told us just give you some examples which are currently available something like just a sample uh, july 31 uh, maturity gsec is right now at 7.5% which is currently available uh, this is a semi annual yield so your annualized return will be much higher uh if you want to invest for a shorter term tenure which is just for two till november 24 uh then in that case you can expect a return of 6.65 so if you compare this to your bank fd you will almost get 150 basis points plus uh, compared to your bank for less than 3 years uh if you want to look at a uh, assuming a four year or a january 26 maturity then in that case you can expect a 7.2% kind of a return on semi annual basis and if you want to look at a little higher return and you want to invest for a shorter tenure then uh, andhra pradesh government sovereign uh, state development loan which is currently available at 7.55% these are just samples just for people to understand as to what is the kind of current ongoing returns that you can easily expect again i'll say these are semi annual interest rates so annualized returns will be higher than this uh, i think we will uh, just run by the last poll uh, which is basically to do with what is the interest payment frequency in gsec and sdl uh, i hope everybody can see question same we'll wait for another 15 20 seconds uh, before we move on to the q and a session so a lot of you have raised queries uh, in the q and a session while registering we will we hope we have tried and addressed a, a lot of the questions that had come up uh, they were very very uh, very good questions that we've tried to address we'll still try and take up some more five six points and we'll try to address them as well so another five seconds and then we'll stop the poll okay uh so Ashish ji, the question is interest rate frequency for GSEC SDL. A uh, lot of participants have participated. Uh, almost twenty percent have either selected monthly, quarterly, or annual. If you can just help us uh, yeah. answer this, please. So interest periodicity in all the GSEC and SDLs is generally semi-annual. so the yields that we discussed for example on the screen 7.35% 6.1% on various government of india security or sdl it is always uh, assumed that the interest will be pay, paid to us on semi annual basis okay so it will be paid on semi annual basis correct so we'll have we'll have the last poll uh, for today uh, this is around uh, tds because uh, we all know that tds is deducted for our income so hope everybody can see so the question is tds is applicable on which of the following instruments fixed deposits and gsec only fixed deposits or only gsec whether tax deducted as source is applicable on fds and gsec or only on fd or only on gsec hope everybody is able to see this on their screen uh we are just waiting for some participants to join in i think we already had 50 plus people to participate we are waiting for more people to participate we'll wait for another 10 15 seconds i'll just repeat the question i uh, hope everybody is able to see it on the screen tds is applicable on which of the following instruments fixed deposits and gsec 
only on fixed deposits or only on GSEC. Okay. I think we have, okay, we have the results. So around 40% of the people have said, uh, Ashiji, that uh, fixed deposits and GSEC, TDS is applicable on both. 52% only on FD and 7% uh, only on GSEC. Yeah, so we have to go by majority. Basically, the majority is right. Uh, all the uh, listed securities, all the tradable securities as per current laws, there is no applicability of TDS. So the returns that we get from GSEC is exempted from TDS requirements. While bank deposits, the, uh, the uh, interest that banks pay on the bank deposit is subject to TDS requirements. So I see a few queries that have come up. We'll move on to the Q&A round. So yeah. since we're on this slide, we'll come back, come to this. TDS is not deductible for everybody or is there a certificate that has to be submitted like how you have to do an FD for TDS to not be deducted? Because in FD, there is a provision where TDS cannot be deducted by submitting some certificate, which is only for a few people. Correct. Is that the same thing that is applicable or required for GSEC? No, GSEC invariably doesn't attract any deduction of uh, tax at source. So whatever interest comes to us comes without any deduction of tax, irrespective of what class of investor we are, whether we are individual HUA for a trust. But uh, yes, in case of bank deposits, as you rightly said, there are exceptions and there are exemptions and therefore you can seek an exemption from TDS. But essentially, almost all the classes of investors are subject to TDS and therefore 10% uh, is what banks deduct as TDS on their interest, on the interest people on their deposits. Understood. So there is no additional paperwork or anything that needs to be done. This is a standard protocol that is applicable to each and every investor who invests in GSEC. Correct. Understood. So we'll move on to the Q&A round. Uh, so one of the queries that is coming from Mr. Naresh Gupta, he is from Gurgaon, uh, wherein his query is that what are what is the lock-in period on these government securities and are these bonds tax-free? Yeah. So uh, there are two things. One is uh, the taxation aspect. Let me uh, address that separately. Uh, all the interest on government of India bonds is taxable in nature and hence tax-free uh, uh, word assignment to uh, government of India security will not be appropriate. And what was the second thing, Sunny? Uh, uh, what is the lock-in period correct. in government securities? So if we are buying a 10-year government bond, uh, we can say that the lock-in for the government is 10 year because there's no way government no, no, will... The question is from the investor's angle. From investor's is angle. Is it lock-in for the investor? Yeah, so there is no lock-in, uh, 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 you know, attached from the investor perspective. If I buy it today, even tomorrow, I can sell Government of India security without having to uh, uh, to remain uh, locked in for a particular period. Not for three months, not for any quarter, no. like in no. case of... Okay, okay, no. understood. So the next question is from Mr. Murli Dharan. Uh, what is the expected best current yield that you can expect from government securities at this juncture? So government of India securities start from one year and uh, on the maximum side, they go up to 30 years. But if we look at depth, the depth in terms of trading, everything, if we look at benchmark government of India security, it is basically a 10 year yield, a 10 year government of India security, which currently is trading at 7.76%. So we can expect a return of 7.75 uh, odd percent on annualized basis on a 10 year GSEC. Understood. So the next question is from Mr. Sushil Tiku. He's from Baruch. He says, uh, do GSEC offer interest payments at the end of the deposit period? Or is it on frequent intervals? That is question one. Question two is, are GSEC equally secured as FD in banks? Yeah. So towards answering the first question, I think we've discussed uh, appropriately that if you are investing in 10-year GSEC, during the 10-year period, you can expect semi-annual interest payments. So having invested today, after six months, you can expect the interest coming in. 
then after six months and likewise. So the, it is not a cho- uh, 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 attached to the maturity. Irrespective of the maturity, you get semi-annual interest payments. The second uh, question was on safety, right? So uh, there, uh, GSEC is a sovereign credit. It is like you are lending to your own government. So uh, government will have naturally the credibility which is beyond any Indian corporate for that matter. So uh, GSECs are completely sovereign in nature and therefore considered as the safest assist, uh, asset class in any country. While in banks, you are prone to credit issues like what banks can run into in, uh, in trouble at times. We have seen uh, various banks going into uh, a, a difficult shape. So bank deposits are unsecured in nature. And as we discussed, they are insured only for an amount of up to rupees 5 lakhs. While GSEC, whatever you amount you earn, whatever amount you remain invested with, is fully a sovereign risk. You are taking a risk on your own uh, government of uh, own central government, actually, or a state government in case of SDI. Sovereign risk. Basically, you are running the sovereign risk. Correct. Understood. So, next question is from Ankita Pandey. Uh, I uh, from Pat- Patna. What she is asking is that FD rates have gone high. Like SBI has increased rates. So has government securities also moved up? Yes. When we invest in bonds, do we get a higher return or do we get the same return? Yes. In fact, I would say GSEC tend to reflect more real-time information than uh, fixed deposits. Because if you see the repo rate hikes, whatever central bank declares as policy measures from time to time, it gets eventually reflected in yield on government of India security. So you can see from 695, 6.95% uh, benchmark 10 year security sometime in uh, uh, March 2022 has now started yielding 7.76%. So in the meanwhile, bank deposit rates would have also gone up, but you will appreciate not to this magnitude. Right. So it is more on real time basis that there is impact on the GSEC. So you can actually invest in this uh, to get a higher return relatively. Correct. Correct. Understood. Uh, so next question is, what is the difference between a sovereign gold bond and a GSEC? Yeah. So it is part of the question which has come from Kamal Dharampal Kalraji from Navi Mumbai. Is it a good investment to make an SGB, which is sovereign gold bond or uh, government securities. Yeah. So sovereign gold bond, as the na- name suggests, it is also a very safe investment. Uh, basically, you are again taking a call on your government. But the underlying assumption is that you are taking a risk on the prices of the gold as an asset. So if gold appreciates, your return on investment in gold bonds appreciates or vice versa. In case of government securities, your investment value doesn't appreciate or depreciate. If you have invested 10,000 rupees in GSEC, you will get your 10,000 rupees back. So it is actually a fixed income instrument. While government of it was uh, sovereign uh, gold bonds are uh, something where there is an interest component attached, which is of a short return in nature, while the actual return in terms of appreciation or depreciation in the asset value is there in a sovereign gold bond. So just to add to what uh, Ashish ji said, Kamalji, eh, these are two different, uh, these are both in the form of bonds. However, sovereign gold bond investments are a good replacement to physical gold investment. Currently, uh, SGB is open, wherein you can look at investing in that. You get a fixed return of 2.5%, again on semi-annual basis from government of India. Uh, these are backed by government itself, sovereign. Uh, you you can you can invest for a tenure of eight years with a five year uh, after which you can liquidate uh, you can uh, redeem it but again those are again tradable instruments there is no lock-in in that as well uh, and whereas gsecs are something wherein you invest more to re- to earn interest whereas sovereign gold bonds are basically a cheaper easier more economical re- investment asset class for physical gold just to give you an example, if you, if you have a family member for whom you're saving for the wedding, uh, which is few years down the line, sovereign gold bond is one of the good investment options that you can explore. Uh, look at investing because in physical gold, you will end up losing money in either liquidation 
or conversion or impurity in sovereign gold bond that is not the case and it is very very economical and again that comes in dmat form so there is no question of impurity and at the same point in time or physical theft and at the same point in time you get a fixed return of 2.5 percent so even if it's for five years you have appreciated by 10 percent by getting an annual return of 2.5 percent currently SGB is also open for you to make investments uh, you can uh, and the same way gsec is basically like ashish ji said is something that you can look at investing uh, for a tenure which is where you're looking at interest returns uh, we'll, we are running out of uh, time. We'll just take the last query. This is by Mahavir Mehta. Uh, he's from Thane. He's asking that uh, for a five year or a 10 year GSEC, the lock in period is very, very high. Can these facilities be encashed after one or two years? Yeah. So we discussed from the investor's perspective, the, there is no lock in as such. When we step in, when we buy government of India security or for that matter, a state development loan, we we can sell, we can exit, we can liquidate the very next day or maybe even the same day. So there's no uh, lock in requirement as such in government of India security. Only thing is that if you want to remain invested throughout the tenor of GSEC, then of course you can opt for one year if your investment horizon is for shorter term or you may go for three year, five year, 10 years, depending upon what your investment perspective is. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Ashiji. I think that was the last query we don't have. Uh, we have a lot of more queries. We will be addressing most of them. Uh, somebody from our team will be getting in touch with all of you in case if there is any query you can discuss with our bond managers one on one and we'll help you address all of them. So somebody will reach out to you from all of us. You can also mail us or contact us on the contact number that we shared. Just a small question for everybody who is uh, who's been a part of this webinar uh, would request you to please participate in this poll. How would you rate today's webinar? Uh, excellent, good or scope for improvement? Uh, we have not written bad because we are hoping that it shouldn't be bad. Uh, mm -hmm. But yes, if there is scope of improvement that we receive, then we are happy to take that feedback. You can email it to us. You can also talk to any of our bond managers and we are happy to address and try to make it more interesting. Uh, we will be coming up with regular webinars at least once a month uh, to educate for the retail and the individuals and to increase uh, the participation uh, by retail individuals in the bond market. If there are any queries, our website that is available, indiabonds.com. Please feel free to uh, talk to us and anything that you need to understand on the fixed income space, we are happy to address uh, looking at buying, selling or anything. And uh, yes, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, uh, NSE. Thank you so much, Ashish Ji, for your time today. And uh, we would like to thank everybody who's participated in today's webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Ashish Ji, and thank you, Sunny, for taking us through this wonderful session. So, and on behalf of NSE, I would like to thank all the participants for participating in today's. Uh, interactive learning session and uh, we will be coming up with more sessions in the future so good day and take care thanks thank you so much thank you so much